And now here's part four of my interview with Rachel Scalar, editor-at-large of Mediaite.com. Jane Velez Mitchell was a guest on this show recently, and she talked about her experience of coming out as being gay. And we're seeing whether it's in Jane's show, which the ratings have certainly gone up considerably, right. or Rachel Maddow, who has very strong ratings as well. This idea of being gay, it's a non-issue for viewers. Why then do you think with Anderson Cooper, there seems to be such a prurient interest in his sexuality? Well, I think that, uh, let's like, take it away, take away like, whether or not Anderson Cooper is gay or not. Like, there's always going to be an interest in someone of Anderson Cooper's stature uh, of their social life. Like, if Anderson Cooper was single and as good-looking as, as he is and as much of a pinup as he is on both sides, then, you know, I think people would always be like, ooh, who's Anderson Cooper dating? Um, so the fact that this has been cloaked in mystery that nobody said anything either way and has been, you know, it has gone through from, from when it legitimately was sort of something to be worried about with respect to your career to now, which is like, say something either way already, nobody cares. Um, it's still, it still smacks of, of being an issue because, you know, because there is a lack of transparency there. But, you know, query whether, whose business it is. Like, why should anybody care? Why should that be his responsibility to reveal it? You know, Gawker basically did a post recently just saying, like, dude, it's time already. Like, say either way. And really, like, why does Gawker get to make that determination. Why do they say, I want to do a post today about Anderson Cooper. So it's up to Anderson Cooper to answer my call. So do you think that television hosts have become almost like politicians? Uh, so for example, with David Letterman, this whole idea that he had these affairs, it, should he be held to the same standard as a politician? Is that what, for example, Anderson Cooper is being held to that well, standard? There's just a blurry line now where everybody, you know, to quote John McCain, everybody's subsumed into this in the big Venn diagram of celebrity. So you're just you're holding different people to higher standards. Obviously, you know there's a different standard you're going to hold Barack Obama to, and David Letterman to, and Khloe Kardashian to. There's just different reasons these different people have their platforms. Um, but yeah, I mean, to the extent that that hypocrisy comes into it, to the extent that um, David Letterman has made jokes about uh, infidelity or has you know taken pot shots at it, then of course that comes back. Many people are watching comedy shows like Jon Stewart or Stephen Colbert or SNL which have real political coverage as well. Do you think the electorate is so stressed out that this is the best medicine for them? I think that uh, political comedy has been a leader actually uh, over the past few years. I mean, I mean Jon Stewart and Stephen Colbert were way ahead of the curve in terms of being critical of the Bush administration in ways that the press eventually followed. And it was actually Saturday Night Live that kicked off with their first um, with the first show back from the writers strike that kicked off the criticism of is the press too soft on Obama with their their sketch about the Obama Hillary debate and like oh can we get you a pillow and like Clinton, how dare you interrupt Obama girl and that sort of thing. So I, I, there's, a, there's a maxim of, uh, about uh, truth in comedy. Uh, basically, comedy is at its best because it uh, is showing the truth. And that's something, you know, uh, something that is about, you know, that is not uh, rooted in truth and rooted in reality isn't going to get the joke. Like, that's the whole point. So with the absurdity of comedy, that is a way of sort of laying out the truth bare for people to, you know, see. And it, it makes a real point. And, and I think that SNL and Jon Stewart and Colbert and, and others, you know, The Onion, I mean, those are places that they get right to the point. Um, and often, you know, on The Daily Show, I mean, they've pioneered a real method of showing hypocrisy and showing people flip-flopping and switching sides with their sort of going back to the archives and comparing two clips back and forth next to each other. I mean, they do a very good job of that, and that's something that they pioneered. And, you know, you don't see that sort of video compared to video fact-checking happening on other stations. Like, they're, they're doing stuff that is real on Scott coverage. They would never want to admit that. But, yeah, you know, comedy is just another way of covering the news. Let's talk a little bit about Mediaite because you're editor sure. at large there. Yes. So tell me about Mediaite. What is the philosophy behind it? Who do you hope to attract to it? Um, Mediaite is um, a, a site about, um, of and about the media, about the people who make media, about what's going on in the media, about trends in the media. It's um, talking about Venn diagrams. It's a big one. It encompasses all sorts of different areas, and it's sort of the lens through which we view the important stories that are going on. Not only the big stories that are, you know, topping Google's zeitgeist and leading cable news, but also what we think are big and important stories, trends that we're following, 
um, interesting people, up and comers. It's, I mean, it's, it's been a real rush. It's been very, very fun to launch something from the get-go. I had a fantastic time at the Huffington Post where I was before, but um, my Eat the Press column was really my own thing. And though I, I worked with the gang at large, like this was different. And one of the fa my favorite things about Mediaite is the fact that um, I'm the editor for all the columnists. I assign and recruit and you know edit. And we've had some amazing people doing great stuff and important stuff. And you know I don't care if it only gets a hundred clicks <laughs> because I think it's important to get it out there. So it's always the balance. And I talked about peas and ice cream before, and I feel like like that's a balance that is very important to me. Like. I have no problem writing about the fun stuff. I always will. But there's also something in me that, that impels me to write about the important stuff. Well, Rachel Scholar, thanks so much for being on Give and Take. Thank you very much for having me.